Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 6, More Work with the Coordinate Plane. This is the last lesson in our first introductory unit on negative numbers. And in the last lesson, we learned how to both locate points in the coordinate plane and read off coordinates of points in the coordinate plane as long as those points have both negatives and positives in them, right? That was the first, first thing that we did, right, is that we, we finally learned how to plot points whose coordinates could involve negatives. Today we're just doing more work on that. We're also going to be plotting some geometric figures like a triangle. So make sure that you have a straight edge. It'll just make your life a little bit easier as opposed to kind of having to freehand stuff, all right? Um, but let's dive right into it today as we work more with plotting points in the coordinate plane. All right, here we go. Now, all right, today we're going to begin by talking about what are known as the four quadrants of the coordinate plane. And as you probably know, the word quad, okay, the word quad, it means four, okay, Latin root for the word four. So, you know, you get these figures called quadrilaterals and they are four sides or the quadrangle, which is typically an area on a college that has four sides. So what happens is when we take the y-axis, the full y-axis including positives and negatives, and the x-axis, that didn't work, and the x-axis including positives and negatives, when they cross, they create four distinct spaces. You can sort of think about it as the upper right, the upper left, the lower left, and the lower right. And they're numbered. And they're numbered for some reason using Roman numerals. So one, two, three, four. One of my students once told me, you know, if you put your pencil down in quadrant one, if you know where quadrant one is, and we'll talk a little bit about what makes quadrant one special, and then you draw a C, right, the way kind of most people draw Cs, then it will then take you through quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And yes, we do want you to know the quadrants, one, two, three, four. They become very important in math as you move along. So let's take a look at exercise number one. The four quadrants are numbered. Typically this numbering is done with Roman numerals. The way of numbering it is shown below. Letter A asks us to give the coordinates of the four points that are plotted. Be sure to label them with their letters and use parentheses. All right, now this is simple enough. Right off the homework from yesterday's homework set, what I want you to do is pause the video now and tell me the coordinates of A, B, C, and wherever it is, D. Why don't you go ahead and do that now? All right, let's go through it. So for letter A, that's pretty easy. It's in the first quadrant. We're gonna go two units to the right, nine units up because we've gone to the right and up. Both of them are positive, so A, has got coordinates of 2 comma 9. All right. On the other hand, point B in the second quadrant, we have to go left 8 units and up 3 units. Since we're going to the left, that's going to be negative up, negative up, negative 8, and then we're going to go up a positive 3. So letter B is negative 8 comma 3. Let's talk about letter C. All right. Letter C, right, here we have to go left of the origin by four units and down one unit. So point C is going to be at negative four, negative one. And finally, point D, we're gonna to go to the right two units. We're going to go down nine units. So point D, oh, no, not two, sorry, three units, I misspoke. Three units to the right, nine units down, so D is at three comma negative nine. Now, it's absolutely critical that you were able to read all of those off correctly, so if you missed one, I want you to think about it a little bit, you know, see what you did right, wrong, etc. Now, this is very important, because this can seem very arbitrary, you know, where's one, where's quadrant one, where's quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four? Well, quadrant one is quadrant one for a very specific reason, and that's what letter B is all about. What is true about both the x and y coordinate of any point plotted in the first coordinate, quadrant? So I want you to think about this. Any point that I plot in this first quadrant, there is something that is true about both the x and the y coordinate. What is it? Pause the video now and think about this a bit. 
All right, well, what's true about both x and y in the first quadrant is that they're both positive numbers. All right, so both are positive. And in fact, before this course, the only quadrant you ever plotted points in was the first quadrant because you didn't know about negative numbers. You, you, know, you couldn't go to the left and down. You could only go to the right and up, right? But that's what makes quadrant one quadrant one is that both x and y are positive. So if you know that and you can draw that C, then you can say, all right, well, that's one, two, three, four, okay? Now, interesting question here, letter C. All right, if the point E, negative 25, negative 17 was plotted, in which quadrant would it lie? Explain. All right, so our grid is not big enough for us to count out and actually plot point E. And yet, using common sense, you should be able to figure out whether it would lie in one, two, three, or four. Pause the video now and think about that for a second. All right, well, it lies in quadrant three. All right, lies in quadrant three. Now, why does it lie in quadrant three? Well, any time the two coordinates are both negative, it's gonna lie in three. And the reason for that is that because you're going to go to the left, 25, and you're gonna go down, 17. Right? You're gonna be somewhere in here. Now the explanation I could say is because both are negative, we plot the point, huh, we plot the point to the left and down. from the origin. And maybe we'll rewrite the word the so it's not red and sparkly. All right. Because both are negative, we plot the point to the left and down from the origin. And that really is kind of what separates the four quadrants, right? You can even think about this for a second. In quadrant one, right, both x and y are positive. In quadrant two, x must be negative and y must be positive. In quadrant three, x must be negative and y must be negative. And in quadrant four, x must be positive and y must be negative. That's what kind of separates the quadrants, is sort of the different combinations of positive and negative when it comes to those coordinate points. Now, by the way, if you are wondering right now, what quadrant would a point be if it lied on the axes, then that's fantastic. Because if you're asking that question, it means that you're, you're pushing your mathematical knowledge. You're thinking about it a little bit more deeply. By the way, the answer to that question is it wouldn't be in any quadrant. It's kind of like saying if I was standing on the border of, you know, the United States and Canada, which country would I be in? And the answer is I wouldn't be in either because I'm standing on the border. And that's the way it is if we've got a point that's actually plotted on one of the axes. It's not actually in a quadrant. All right, let's keep going because there's more stuff to talk about. Exercise number two, plot each of the following points on the grid shown to the right, then state which quadrant it is in. All right, so this is easy. You worked a lot on plotting points on the last homework. What I'd like you to do is plot those four points, then tell me, is it in quadrant one, two, three, or four? Go ahead and do that. All right, here we go. Point A is at seven comma negative four. Let's go seven units to the right and four units down. So point A is gonna be right there, all right? And that is in quadrant four. Now it doesn't hurt at all, of course, when doing this to say, well, okay, I know where they're both positive, that's quadrant one. Then that trick, if I draw the letter C, right? That's gonna be two, that's gonna be three, that's gonna be four, and then I kinda of really want to erase this. All right, so let's do letter B. Negative six comma two, that means I'm going to go to the left six units, I'm gonna go up two units. So 
here's my letter B, that's in quadrant two. Letter C is at two, nine, right? So it's up here in quadrant one. And negative eight, negative five, which is right where that three is. Oh, and if I move that, I move them all. That's not good. Anyway, we'll just erase that for now. Negative eight, negative five, puts me right there. And that's in quadrant three. All right. So the quadrants are really relatively easy, but we also treat them very briefly in this course and then we kind of move on from them. I want to look at another issue that's kind of unrelated to the quadrants now, but does have something to do with geometry. So let's get into that in the next exercise. And specifically what we're going to look at is what happens when you take a coordinate point and you take one of the two parts of it, either the x or the y, and you change its sign. So if it was negative, you make it positive, or if it's positive, you make it negative. Let's take a look at what happens in exercise number three. A triangle has vertices at the points A, 2 comma 2, B, 9 comma 2, and C, 4 comma 7. Letter A asks us to plot each of these three points and label with their letters. Then draw line segments between each of the three points to complete the triangle. All right, let's just do this together. No big deal. A is at 2, 2, so we're going to go 2 to the right, 2 up. That's simple. So we've got A sitting right there. B is at 9, comma 2. So sitting right there. C is at 4, comma 7. Right there. And did I include a straight edge? I didn't include a straight edge. That's okay. We'll just freehand it. Not a problem. All right, and there's my triangle ABC. That's one of the major uses, by the way, of the coordinate grid, is to be able to draw and get a good sense for geometric objects like triangles. Now let's look at letter B. Another triangle has vertices shown below, D, negative two comma two, E, negative nine comma two, and F, negative four comma seven. All right, it asks us to plot and label each of these three points and draw line segments between each. Now, in case it's not obvious, D, E, and F are exactly the same points as A, B, and C, except I've taken the X coordinates of each case and I've changed their sign from positive to negative. All right, so let's take a look, let's plot them. D is at negative two comma two, so I'm gonna go to the left two units, I'm gonna go up two units, so D is gonna be right there. E is at negative nine comma two, right? So I'm gonna go out to negative nine, I'm gonna go up two, so I'm gonna be right there with letter E. All right. And finally, letter F, negative four comma seven is gonna be right there. And now I'm gonna do a horrible job of freehanding the, uh, <laughs> the line segments in but I think that you get the idea. All right, there we go. Triangle A, B, C, triangle D, E, F. And all we did, right, all we did was change the sign on all the coordinate points here, the X coordinates, we negated it. So we, we, we found the opposite X coordinates. Now letter C. Triangle D, E, F is the reflection of triangle A, B, C across the Y axis. Why? do you think it's called a reflection? All right, so this may be the first time you've ever heard the term reflection, or possibly, possibly, you know, you also saw the term line of reflection before when you looked at various geometric shapes and you drew lines in that you could fold the shape over and it would fall on itself. Why was it called a reflection? Pause the video now and think about this a little bit. Well, it's pretty much this simple, right? If the y-axis, if the y-axis was a mirror, right? Reflection in a mirror. If the y-axis was a mirror and we set this triangle in front of it, then this triangle would be what its image would look like in the mirror. You know how like in the mirror, your left is your right, etc. right? Same idea here, right? So triangle DEF, 
triangle DEF is what triangle ABC would look like. as an image in a mirror. A lot of times reflections, a lot of times reflections are also called flips. Literally, if I took triangle ABC and I flipped it across the y-axis, if I took this page and I folded it along a crease that was the y-axis, it would land on triangle DEF. And that's what will always happen whenever we change the sign on the x-coordinate. Isn't that kind of cool? When we change the sign on the x-coordinate, we flip a point across the y-axis. We reflect it across the y-axis. Now let's look at what happens when we change the sign on the y-coordinate. And that's letter D. Now I've kind of reproduced the picture that we had up above so that we can see it. But let's read off letter D. A third triangle has vertices at G, 2 comma negative 2, H, 9 comma negative 2, and I, 4 comma negative 7. Plot these three vertices in the triangle sides. How does triangle GHI compare to triangle ABC in terms of reflections? All right, this one I'd like you to pause the video and do completely on your own. Go ahead. All right, now again, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that the only difference between the coordinates G, H, I and A, B, C, forget about D, E, F for now, just A, B, C, is that we've taken each one of the Y coordinates and we've changed their sign. They all used to be positive, now we've made them all negative. So for G, I'm gonna go to the right two and down two. So I'm gonna be sitting right here. All right. For H, we're going to go to the right 9 and down 2. And for I, we're going to go to the right 4 and down 7. Right? I'm going to draw in those line segments. Right? And we get that triangle. And again, what should be obvious is if we took this piece of paper and we folded it across the x-axis, this triangle would land on this triangle. So we can literally say that triangle GHI is, uh, I can't get the letter H, is the reflection of triangle ABC across Come on, R. Across the x-axis. All right. It's very important to not just say that it's a reflection, but also what line it got folded or reflected across. And again, little irony here, right? Whenever we change the sign on the y-coordinate, right, it takes a point and it flips it over the x-axis. And that kind of makes some sense, right? Simply because the y-coordinate actually tells us how far above and below the x-axis we are. So if we change the sign, if we have this thing, c, right, which is at 4 comma 7, and all of a sudden we put it at 4 comma negative 7, it is now exactly the same distance below the x-axis as the original one was above the y-axis, and yet, how far it is away from the y-axis, which again, ironically, is the x-coordinate, hasn't changed at all. All right? Let's take a look at one more problem that gets at this idea. Here we go. Exercise number four. Give the coordinates of the point A, 4, negative 8, if it was reflected across the x-axis and if it was reflected across the y-axis. All right. See if you can figure out the answers to these two questions. All right, well, one of the nice ways of visualizing this is to draw a really kind of simplistic grid and plot the point A, right? So if I just kind of, oh, there's my Y, there's my X, right? So 
You know, I'm gonna just do this, I'm gonna have y, I'm gonna have x. Where would four comma negative eight be? One, two, three, four, it would be four units to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units down. So this would be a at four comma negative eight. Now, if I reflect this across the x-axis, if I took this point and I folded it across the x-axis, and then apparently I erase part of the y-axis, right? What will happen is it'll end up right here. It'll still be four units to the right of the y-axis, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units up. Mm -hmm. So the answer there will be four comma eight, right? Likewise, if I draw exactly the same picture, well, maybe not exactly the same picture, but close to the same picture, I don't have to make these very neat, right? I've got y, I've got x, I've got a little dot above y. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right here, I've got that point a at four comma negative eight. Same picture that I start with, but if I now take this point and I fold it or flip it across the y-axis, right, it's going to end up right being at exactly the same y-coordinate but it will be at negative four comma negative eight. All right, and it really is pretty much that simple. Now you could definitely memorize that, oh, in order to reflect a point across the x-axis, I'll change the sign on y. So, right, if it's four negative eight, then oh, I reflect it across the x-axis, so that negative eight will become a positive eight. And when I reflect in the y-axis, I change the x-coordinate from four to negative four. It's okay to memorize those, but I think it's a lot better to actually draw out little sketches, think about folding that point across the axes so that it lies the same distance above or below, left or right, right? And then just read off the coordinate points. All right, let's do some summary. Okay, so we kind of saw with all due respect, two distinct different ideas today. One of them was simply this idea of the quadrants, this idea that the x and the y axis, when they cross at the origin, divide up the coordinate plane into four different quadrants, quadrant one being the most important one where the x and the y coordinates are both positive. The other three quadrants need to be memorized, the locations where they're at, okay, but it's not too bad. The other thing that we saw was that if you have a coordinate point and you change the sign of either the x coordinate or the y coordinate, it will reflect or flip that point across either the x or the y axis depending on whether x and y were negated, all right? We'll work a little bit more with these further on in this course, but we'll work on a bunch with them in both Math 7 and Math 8. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.